This is Gregory Shelton for the Historic Living Modern World. Today we're in Exton, Pennsylvania, the home of Jonathan Zangwell's Stolen Sun Brewery. Now, the cool thing about Jonathan is he went to school to be a food engineer, so he's taken all of his skills and turned it into making a great beer at Stolen Sun. He also roasts coffee beans and does some amazing performance art. Let's go hang out with him, taste his beer, and see what he's all about. Let's go check it out. Hey Jonathan, how you hey, doing, Greg. man? How you doing? I'm doing well, man. Awesome. Welcome to Stolen Sun. Thank you, man. Listen, it's so beautiful in here. It's so really colorful. As you know, I love your beer. Now I want to get a chance to, to kind of learn at your home office what you do great. Absolutely. Let's go check it out. Thanks, man. All right. So where exactly are we right now? So right now we're in the brew house. This okay. is where all the magic happens. Uh, this is where we actually create the wort. Uh, and the wort's what gets fermented and makes the delicious beer that we, we, we know and love. Make. Yep, absolutely. absolutely. So uh, let's go through the process a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. How's that? Yes. All right, so it all starts with, with malt. One of the malt. major ingredients of making beer. Malt's basically barley that's been germinated and uh, Basically, we're creating starches inside of the malt. What we're trying to do in the brew process is, you know, all those geeky things we probably learned in high school that you never really knew what they were little for. Little chemistry mixed like with all Like the Krebs kind of... cycle, sure. glycolysis, all that stuff that most of us glazed over. Like, I actually cherished it, so that's kind of where we're at now. You know, we get the barley that's already been malted and comes in a form that looks like this. Okay. If you look that's a that. granola, kind of a granola look to it, right? Yeah, it's I mean, it's, it's barley, right? Yeah. So um, the once the barley becomes malted, it then goes through several steps in which it'll be kilned or roasted to achieve different colors. We're looking at what's called crystal malt here. So this malt has been produced to uh, provide a very sweet flavor, okay. as well as uh, um, give a, a really nice red color to the beer. Now, is this a standard, is this standard for all your beers or is this you start or you change it for so different types of beers? This is one of the key ingredients probably for our Uncle John's beer, which is our classic West Coast IPA. Gotcha. Uh, but we use it for very probably, we don't use it for a ton of beers these days, but the Crystal Mall is definitely an important part to, to brown ales, gotcha. to, uh, West Coast IPAs, okay. amber beers, and so forth. You can actually taste the malt. I mean, it's it's going to have a nice sweet flavor to it. And yeah, so, I taste it. And so our Obviously goal, green, right? So our goal in recipe development is mm. to basically like think about what color we want the beer to be. Very important. Then how sweet, what kind of flavors we want. So do we want more grainy. Do we want more sweetness? Do we want a lighter? Lighter beer, darker beer, so forth. Right. So as we develop the profiles, we develop the malt bills, trying to achieve the final outcome. Um, right. And luckily, we're pretty good at it. So we're not like making little tiny batches and then. Sure. Because uh, and, and the look of the beer, as far as the viscosity look, people care about that stuff nowadays. Absolutely. It's a big it's thing. It's huge. It's sure. huge. Wow. Um, so this malt. As you can tell, it's super sweet, it's, right? It's kind of it's delicious, like you gotta be yeah. honest. It's called crystal malt and yeah. it's also called caramel malt because yeah. it's a caramelization that happens in the roasting process. Right. So once we have this malt, um, we'll go through a mill and the mill will basically like crack the malt. So the whole, it, we're not grinding okay. anything. So the it's shells won't be in the yeah, final product. It, it's literally, we're taking the malt and it's, and it's basically cracking it in half and exposing the starch inside. Gotcha. So once that happens, all of our malt that's cracked goes up top here to, to a hopper. Okay. Where it awaits to go into the mash tun. So mash tun's where we, uh, where we convert starches into sugars. So what happens in this step is the malt comes down from this hopper uh, and hot water gets injected into the malt. Okay. Uh, we have some rakes in here that help us mix this all up. And it basically is almost like a porridge once it's all in here. It's like a thick consistency, almost like a porridge. And at this point, the hot water starts 
the conversion of starch into sugar. Okay. So our game as as a as a brewer, you know, whether you're um, whether you're making wine, beer, distilled spirits, whatever uh, you know, kind of alcohol we're producing, sugar is the key key component. So our whole goal in this process, besides like blending delicious flavors and malts and everything, is like we're really trying to create sugar. The sugar is what's responsible for giving us alcohol, which is what we all love. Hmm. So interesting. Uh, this process takes about 60 minutes. And once we get to an end point where the starches are converted into sugar, uh, we then do what's called a boil off, which we recirculate um, the liquid almost like a like a percolator. You know how percolators okay. work? Sure. Kind Absolutely. of keeps going. Like yep. So <clears throat> we do that in this step because we're trying to clarify the liquid that we're going to send over to the kettle. Gotcha. So we do that for about 15 minutes. Once we get a nice clear liquid that we're happy with, we then uh, send this over to our kettle, which is over on this side. And the kettle is where we do the boil. So the important, you know, you know, why we need to boil is to sanitize the wort to give a really clean product for the yeast. That's and you're boiling down. still. You're, you're you're taking the mash. You're extracting the liquid from that and the sugars. Yep. And then it goes in there to heat up to. Like said, to boil. It. So, to and we have a couple steps. So, not only do we want to boil it, well, you're not clarifying here. Okay. You're just like you're clarifying here, but it doesn't have to be a fully clear liquid. Sure. We're trying to because sometimes the husks can give some astringency. So we're trying to like remove all of that. Gotcha. Before we get to a boil, when we get to a boil. The key, you know, what we're trying to accomplish is is sanitizing. Okay. And then it's also the point where we add the delicious hops. Ah, so that's incredibly important. Yes. This is what makes this and, beer. And you, know, you know, what I'd like to think Stolen Sun is known for is very like clean, aggressively hopped beers. Like we make beer that is super delicious and very clean and beers that you want to drink, many of them. So gotcha. that's our goal in our More beer. is more, I get it. Sure. Yeah, so you know, and, and for us, like I've been a hop head for, you know, over 20 years. And when I first started brewing back in the early 90s, I was dosing stuff with so much hops at that time, people didn't know what to really make of it. So it's kind of cool to be in the business today where like I can't add enough hops. Like literally what we used to add sure. in the 90s and we're like, this is a crazy So when you look at it, it's people who are viewers, they're looking at standard beers, which are you know very light beers. From a percentage, how much hops for what you're doing on your standard beers to what we're used to, whether it be like a Bush or an Anheuser beer? Well, I don't really know those hop profiles, but my, okay. my guess is, you know, you're somewhere, you know, a quarter to a half pound of hops per barrel, and a okay. barrel is 31 gallons, and we're probably up to, you know, five to six pounds okay. per barrel. So like, like tenfold, like wow. what we do with okay. hopping. But I mean, that's what. You know that's what we love like we right. only do what we love here and that's making very clean aggressive deliciously hopped beers the whole trick for brewing honestly is cleanliness if we have a good clean process we'll make good clean beer so that's why we're very anal about how we clean our tanks how we sanitize it right. we never want air getting into the beer so this process happens for about 14 days and so the initial parts, this, this vigorous, uh, as it's churning and eating the sugars. Okay. This process will end in about three days. All right. And then this will all go away. At that point, we will cap the tank off and start to, you know, add a small percentage of sugar remaining. And that's going to allow us to naturally carbonate the beer in the tanks. Okay. So remember I was saying like before, like if I were to close that tank off, I'd like explode you, a tank. Yeah, you just pressure. At and... some point, we there's an equation we can get into that, uh, you know, if I have X percent of sugar, I know I'm going to ferment this much, which is going to create this much CO2, and my tank can hold that. These tanks yes. can hold 15 to 20 PSI, and I'll create that much pressure in the tank naturally, so I don't have to add the carbonation back into the Sure, tank. understood. And so... Over the next 14 days, we'll start to bring the temperature down slowly, which helps us to lager the beer. At the end, we'll be at 32 degrees. Um, one thing that makes us a little bit different than other breweries is we use centrifuge, which is a very expensive piece of equipment, instead of filtering the beer. When you filter a beer, you go through a medium that'll actually like strip particles out. We put it into an industrial centrifuge, which spins the beer like 8,000 times the effect of gravity and will pull the particles out of the beer to give us a much cleaner product at the end. 
Are you are you doing that because of some type of screening issue? Could pull good things out too. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and we want flavor, to maintain maybe, as much yes. flavor. Like we spend a lot of money on hops. Sure. So we want we want, we want the biggest bang. Not only that, but we can separate much cloudier beer than other breweries that may have to pull it out because it can't go through a filter. So we actually are able to to you know be more efficient and pull more clear beer off of here. Making your beer starts when you order the barley and you order the, all, all that. How long ago did you say, I've nailed this, where I'm super happy with my product? Or is that an always a moving it target? It never happens. It never is that? It never happens. Okay. Every time I drink beer, no matter where I'm at, I'm always thinking, what can we do better? Gotcha. How can we change this a little bit? Or you just think of a different way to do something. And, you know, we, right. we have a great process in place here. And that process is all about, you know, the cleanliness, how we clean, how we brew. So the process is great. So as long as we stick to the process, we can change some of you know the pieces of the pro process. But as long as we stick to the pieces that make our beer our beer, we're always gonna make great beer. Love it, absolutely love it. So Jonathan headed to the bar, so which is the most important thing. I can't wait to taste his beer. Let's go do it. All right, man, let's taste some beers. Yeah, are you finally ready to drink I beer? am ready to go. I am awesome. so ready. So I always like to say when I go into a brewery, I want to try uh, the standards that they have on tap, and that's okay. how you can really tell like, you know, how good a brewery, uh, a brewery is. Okay. So uh, these are four of our staples that we have on at all times. Uh, Saffragette City is our Kolsch, Baby Juices is a Session, uh, Juicy IPA, Uncle John's is an Old School West Coast IPA, New Axton IPA is our uh, New England Style IPA, and then, uh, as you know, we're also a coffee roastery, so we make a coffee oatmeal stout, and that's called Jumpy John's. So that's, uh, you know, we kind of always want to try, like, one side of the spectrum to the sure. other, so we'll start with the Saffragette City. Now I gotta tell you, Saffragette City, it's always, it always delivers from what I'm looking for in a beer like this. It's delicious. Kolsch. So Cheers. Kolsch is a traditional uh, German ale. Okay. Uh, brewed in the uh, Cologne area of Germany. Okay. Uh, so, you know, you definitely get some graininess on the nose. Yep. And also you get some of the noble hop characters that we, we use in this beer as well. We use a, uh, a oh, hop so called. Damn refreshing. We use a hop called Saphir, okay. which is a it's an offshoot of a noble hop that they uh, grow in America. Super clean. I taste a little caramel in there. Is it? Is it? There's a little sweetness to okay. it. Uh, not as dark a caramel as what we we looked at in the brewery. So I have to say, this is a a wham bam hoppy man. Hmm. That is delicious. And you see nice clarity on this beer too. Absolutely. And that all comes from uh, just how we uh, age the beer and then the centrifuge pulls out most of it. So I see how clear it is. What, what type of customer comes here for a Kolsch like this? So, you know, we have a, a wide range of customers that comes in. This customer is looking for, you know, mm. a more uh, low end, you know, low flavor sort okay. of beer. So. When they come in asking for some of the premium style, American premium styles of beer that we all have grown to not enjoy. <laughs> uh, this beer here, super clean. the first clean. thing you're gonna give them. It's the first thing, it's super clean, it's got some sweetness to it, really nice hop profile, but it's a beer you can drink all day long. So if I came here and I, and I have no interest in craft beers, this is what you're gonna slide me. You're gonna drink gotcha. it. But mm. it's delicious. So it like, is absolutely delicious. It's something that someone's going to drink and go like, "Holy cow! I do like craft beer." And right. Like, I'm not afraid of it now. I'm next. To, I'm ready to take the next. Step. Let's go. Right. Yeah. I love right. it. That's delicious. It, it's. It was my first introductory 
uh, beer to your company that I love. And now let's let's make the next step. Cool. Thanks. Okay, Jonathan, what's next? So the next beer is probably one of our most popular beers. It's Baby Juices. It's a session hazy IPA. Okay. So about 4.9% loaded with mosaic and citra. Full flavored beer oh, without the, citrus the alcohol. Absolutely. So you can see that it's, it's not clear, right? So it's definitely a lot of turbidity to it, right? Okay. And when you smell the nose, like you immediately get like tropical fruits yes. on the nose. We don't add any fruit to this beer, but it's all uh, from the hops. There's wow. You, I mean, it's, it feels like it's, it. there's a, there's a lemon, there's a lemon or citrus flavor to it without tasting it. Yeah, maybe some pineapple, some mango, mm. like definitely has a lot of super interesting notes and drinkable. So, so what are the notes in this? So you're not at, this is standard. So what, what's giving it its notes? Uh, I mean, it's it's all hops. Okay. So, and I think like the hops that we use, a lot of mosaic, we use a lot of citra. Um, this is the flavor of the true hops. Yes. And when you use the right hops, it gives you this flavor. Absolutely. Only certain hops can give us that flavor. So we've, we've honed in mm. this recipe and... That's delicious too. And this is an all wow. day beer. So you can still have a full flavored beer mm -hmm. without the alcohol. And that's kind of what we've done here. So Jonathan, I'm looking at these beautifully colorful cans and I'm starting to realize I see a Bowie thing. I see a possible Grateful Dead thing. I may see a Jay-Z thing. This feels like there's a music quality here. Is, it, is that true? Absolutely. Music's a huge part of our life. And okay. That's what we, you know, when we do our labels, it's really about us. So, you know, we're really looking for themes that kind of we love and like kind of we said before is like everything we do here is stuff that we love. So music's super important. Definitely. What's number three? And number three is Uncle John's beer. It's, okay. Uh, you know, this is probably my favorite beer that we have. Okay. It's a recipe that I've been brewing for over 20 years. Um, wow. And this is all those crystal malts that we were tasting back in the brewery, super sweet. Sure. Uh, that's kind of like a West Coast IPA has to have a nice uh, sweetness to it, has to have a nice color, a good clarity. You see it's like fairly clear, a little bit of hop haze to it, yeah. but, but pretty I, pretty I see clear. it. This does have that darker caramel color, huh? Um, and this is a beer that we brew uh, um, in batch numbers. Okay. So it's the base is always the same, but just like when the Grateful Dead played, like all of their songs, like you could hear the same song and it would be different, you know, a hundred different times. Uh, this is batch number 25, so we okay. keep the base the same, and then we play around with some of the aromatic and flavor hops in the beer. So that's the jam, really that's the jam band it's the feel, jam right? right. So, that's right. What, so when, I, when I, 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 it smells wonderful. So it's hoppy as anything. You're going to get a lot of like citrus notes, orange okay. notes, pine notes are always big in West Coast IPAs, and there's going to be some sweetness as well. Mm. About seven percent alcohol. Oh gosh, that's delicious too. And it's super fresh, right? It is I very mean, fresh. It's extremely Refreshing. fresh, almost like, you know, a citrus bouquet pops off in this beer. Nice carbonation, nice sweetness, a good mouthfeel. This is the beer, when I think of beer that I grew up with, like this is right. a beer, like- This, this is, is what you've always looked for. This is for. like real beer. Right. I can honestly say when we talk about this being maybe your entry beer for a new customer, this isn't that big of a leap to me. No. In, in the sense that if you're a beer, beer drinker, which was probably why you would come to this place, uh, if, I, if you were to sell them this, it's a, it's a graduation that I think that a natural beer lover would love. All right, number four. All right, this is our uh, flagship New England style IPA. We okay. call New Exton IPA. And again, a New England now is gonna be a nice hazy beer, yep. a juicy hazy beer. And uh, you know this is what this beer is. Um, a lot of mosaic and citra again in this beer. Yep. You're going to get a lot of fluffiness when you drink this beer. We use some oats and some uh, flaked barley and so forth in this okay. beer, which gives more mouthfeel, more turbidity, more flavor to the beer. Right. And the nose. I mean, as soon as you hit the nose, mm. you get fruit on the nose. It's funny I, when you mention the word juicy. <clears throat> It feels incredibly juicy. It's, it feels like a concentrated beer. It's something that you would, it, it, it has a heaviness to it yeah. in a good way. It's got a bit of dankness. Mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, we Delicious. use Idaho, Idaho 7 in this beer, which okay. is, uh, you know, besides the mosaic and the citron, which just gives a really nice kind of uh, fermented fruit note to it is the best way I can explain it. Uh, but you get tons of papaya, mango, citrus. Yeah, I mean, I mean all the tropical fruits are in this beer. Ready? Yeah. Do we? So as far as a selling beer, is this something that you would push? To a new customer and all customers or? absolutely we we sell a good amount of new exton throughout the area you know obviously it's got exton in the name so you know locally people uh you know really enjoy the beer but we sell a lot of this throughout the region and uh and then when you call this new exton that's a take on new england i was imagining yep, absolutely. Right? so is there anything to do with the area in this beer besides the name or is it just nope. something no nope, yeah. it's just the play on new england we we kind of thought like well how do we make this our own and new exton seemed to work well and we yeah. have a we have a play on words that we say like you know kick back you know, enjoy, and you know you're not an exit anymore. I, I love so. it. And, you know, it, any 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 good beer company slash marketer knows when you're in your area, you promote your area. Absolutely. And if I was living in this area, this is the beer that I would want. So, so this this brewery is in Exton. You you live in Exton, right? So um, you're you're producing a beer that that the town and the area can be proud of. Absolutely. What does that mean to you as a brewmaster, as a person that built this brewery? Well, you know, we're a community you know, community business here. And I think it's fun that we actually have an Exxon component in one of our beers. I think it's also kind of funny that, you know, we have new Exxon IPA, but yet there's this whole tropical scene. And, sure. And Exxon is, you know, known for shopping centers and for malls and for strip centers. And and this label is anything but that, which so, kind so, of is funny. So with your, your new Exxon beer, you're giving, it, you're giving the people of Exxon a chance to think out of the box and think in their own vacation while they drink a great That's beer. That's right. Love it. Mm. So the last and final beer has an amazing dark quality to it that I think is going to be very interesting. This is Jumpy John's Java Stout. So okay. a lot of people don't realize, but not only are we a, a brewery, we're also a roastery. So we do a lot of coffee roasting on site here. And of course, as a coffee roaster, we have to add some uh, coffee to beer at some point. Sure, why not? Um, so this is a uh, oatmeal stout recipe that we've infused uh, our Hello Darkness into. So okay. we do packaged coffee as well. And Hello Darkness is a blend of uh, Colombian and African coffees. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a really nice dark roast that doesn't really go uh, to the point of being uh, ashy and burnt. <laughs> oh, gotcha. So a lot of body, a lot of flavor, a lot of sweetness, delicious coffee. Um, and we add it in the hot phase and the cold phase in the brewing process. Okay. Which kind of makes it a little different than a lot of people do, but it's what makes this beer. So I can honestly, obviously say that, you know, when you look at a dark beer like this, it has the coffee that you roasted into the beer. Yes. Which, again, having your hands on beginning to end as a person that studied this, it really puts a signature on your beer. Yeah, absolutely. You know, coffee is something that, that I've fallen in love with and has become a big part of my life. So I feel like combining it with the beer is really, you know, essential to our business. Now I have to ask you, Jonathan, are you the type that has to have a coffee before you get to work or? Absolutely. Okay, so you. As soon as I <laughs> so wake you, up. <laughs> so you, you've taken your early morning and you put it into your midday. That's by right. Making so, so what are the notes that we were going to experience when we taste this? Well, this? I mean, you, you smell right I off smell the, the coffee. Yeah, you yeah, smell absolutely. coffee right off. But, you know, it also has oatmeal in it. So the oat, it gives a nice creamy texture to it as well. So you're going to get some nice like roasted notes to it, some sweet notes. It, and again, this has a lot of caramel in it as well to give some sweetness. So I'm imagining body. that the, the oatmeal has a good, you know, it's in the family of the, the barley that you, you make beer out of. So you're in the same family, right? Same, it's a great. Yes. And I mean, it's gonna taste like a latte, really, when you drink this. Oh my God, damn it. Mm. <laughs> so you get chocolate notes, you get sweet notes, you get coffee notes. You know, if you're, if you're thinking about Mm. You know, drinking an espresso drink. Like so if this I'm, is. <clears throat> so if I'm a coffee lover, you know, I might not drink this the whole night. It's certainly something you want to drink at the end of the night. Absolutely. Right? So it's, again, very delicious, and it does have a lot of caffeine in it too. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, listen, man, I thank you very much. Your beer is the best in the area. 
And I appreciate making the awesome. time. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you, Greg. Thanks.